So we're joined by Eugen Miropolsky. He is the MD Managing Director for Europe, Israel and the Pacific for WeWork. Wonderful to have you here, Eugen. Thank you for the invitation, Caroline. So education in London, why start it here? You were in Washington, you're in Dumbo, but now you're moving to London. Why offer education within WeWork? Yeah, uh, so London was a uh, logical next uh, step for us. Uh, since WeWork was founded in 2010, we've always been thinking about how can we help people be part of something bigger than themselves? How can we help them to create their life's work? And uh, as the future of work is changing, also the future of education is changing uh, for the requirements of the future of work. So London was a uh, very uh, logical next step for us as London is our second largest market for WeWork worldwide. Uh, and there's a very uh, booming tech scene here in London. Also for underrepresented communities within technology, so women and those perhaps no, not so financially uh, sound how are you why why offer these scholarships why put one million in what is it just to get thumbs up from the governments and from diversity it is definitely a very important topic for us overall uh, our communities are very inclusive at we work and uh, at the, in the same mission with uh, flat iron we're seeing that there are underrepresented groups in tech and uh, we want to help them to get uh, the skills that are required for the future of their work London is an interesting market you say it's your second biggest one I think I read a stat, number one private sector user of office space. I mean, out of everything in London, WeWork is the number one user of private sector. How are you expanding here? Where else we can see you popping up? How many more venues? So we have been expanding very fast uh, in London over the last three years. We have currently 22 locations open in London and announced another 13 locations that will be opening very soon. So like this, we're creating really a network within London where people can work out of one location or another. But also what's most important is to connect with other WeWork members. And actually, it is a global community in over 60 cities in over 20 countries all over the world. Global, you're also in charge of Israel. You're also in charge of the Pacific, so Southeast Asia. Where are the hotspots that you're having to fly the most to and expand? So I, I do travel uh, a lot, and I think we do have uh, a lot of hotspots because what's happening is that there is a macro shift in the way how people want to work. And uh, I think we're just seeing the beginning of that shift where people don't want to go to work just to do a work. People want to have work that is uh, enabling them to have a meaningful and purposeful life. And this is happening all over the world. Uh, there's definitely certain uh, markets that have been more established for us, like WeWork was started in New York. London's our second largest market. At the same time, there are very interesting, very fast growing markets like Berlin or any market in Southeast Asia. What about acquisitions? Are you a man having to do deals? We see that WeWork's just bought a digital marketing company. They've got into education with Flatiron. What companies are you eyeing up and how does it build on what you're trying to achieve? So we always think uh, every single day, how can we offer the best services to our members? Because we really think, how can we enable them to create their life's work? And uh, apart from the space and the community we offer, we're thinking, what are the services that our members need? And like this, uh, we're looking for natural extensions, uh, be it in the education space, be it uh, uh, with Meetup, or, or be it with the health and wellness. So some you're eyeing up in Europe or in Israel, where, where would you see your acquisitions coming from? Uh, so I think uh, so far uh, they've uh, been uh, from all around the world. I think uh, as uh, we've seen some of the most recent ones have been from the US. But at the same time, even when we acquire a company in the US, we're thinking about how can we build a global community and how can we offer certain services globally. I have to ask you, because it's fascinating that you're in charge of Israel as well, and there are reports out at the moment that you're perhaps looking for debt investors in Israel. For not a small chunk of change, it's $1 billion of debt potentially from institutional investors. Is this correct reporting? Is there some, and, and why are you looking to the debt market? So while I can't go uh, too much into detail uh, into the specifics of this, uh, we are a very international company and we are operating in uh, now more than diff 60 different cities in more than 20 countries. I think what we are mostly focusing on right now is really building that community and then finding out what kind of services do they need. And sometimes in different countries they also need different types of services, but for us it's always very important to be very close to our community. You need more funding. Do you need deeper pockets if you're, you're on the acquisition trail? You've already got four and three quarter billion dollars, a lot of money coming from the Vision Fund. Are we going to see WeWork needing more and more money? I think what uh, we will see is uh, WeWork uh, expanding uh, very fast uh, with its uh, core product um, uh, with WeWork uh, across many different new countries as well. But at the same time, we will also see new product lines, uh, be it with Flatiron, 